Hi everyone. Today's video shows DeWalt DW735 Helical Cutter Head Replacement. We've remade a clearer installation tutorial based on your feedback. Firstly, remove the top cover with the wrench included. Secondly, remove the three fixing screws of the dust collection cover. Lift the cover slightly upwards, and then you can remove the dust collection port. Finally, remove the limiting clips of the cutter head. The original purpose of this device is to make sure that the cutter head won't wobble when replacing the straight blade. You can use the wrench that comes with it to remove the screws that hold the blade in place, which is something that DeWalt has done very well, and it's a very versatile tool with great design. There are two magnets on the back end of the wrench, it can hold the cover and the blade in place to keep your fingers from getting cut when you're holding it. After the blade is removed, we use the wrench to remove this side of the handle first. In fact, starting with either side is fine. The cover removed can be used to put the screws of this side, so you don't confuse it with the other. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the chain tensioning device, be careful with the spring that is hooked on the chain, don't pull it too much. Use an Allen wrench to remove the screws that hold the chain in place. But I've only shown one in this video. Next remove the belt, it's going to be a very difficult part. So a small trick, pull the belt out with one hand, and then assist it with the other hand. After that, press the belt that's been pulled out and rotate it on the pulleys, and then take it off little by little. Use a small wood strip, jam it onto the cutter head, and then use a 24mm socket wrench to remove the locking nut from the pulley. After the pulley is removed, remember to put away the washer and the key, especially the key, it's very small. Use the circlip pliers to remove the circlip on this side. The circlip may be a little bit tight. You need to try a few more times. Use the wrench to remove the set screws on the side of the gearbox. Remove the spring at the rear of the chain tensioner. Use a circlip plier to remove the chain retaining circlip, being careful not to overstretch it so that it doesn't come back up. Use an applicable Allen key to remove the three long bolts on the gearbox. At this point, we need to remove the gearbox from the planer, use the gearshift adjustment paddles to withdraw the gearbox and then hang it aside. Use the circlip pliers to remove the circlip. Still be careful, you may need to try a few more times. Use the wood strip we used before, jam the cutter head into place, and then use a wrench or hand pliers to remove the curvature gears. Using a right-sized wooden strip, aligned with the bearings, Beat it towards the direction of the large bearings, if you feel a little clogged, you can use WD-40 and other products to lubricate it first. Generally after beating, the bearings can't be used anymore, but the good thing is that the helical cutter head we sell is installed with bearings. Inside of the box, there are instructions, inserts, wrenches, screws, helical cutter head. The cutter head is wrapped in industrial film, there is anti-rust lubricant inside. You can clean it a little bit after you get it.
Using a wood block, place the block underneath the path of the helical cutter head, adjust the height of the unit to hold the block down. Place the cutter head along the mounting hole, and the block of wood can help to tip the cutter head up so that the other side of the cutter head is aligned with the mounting holes. Using a suitable socket tool, wrap the threads on the side of the large bearing to avoid accidental damage, and tap in the direction of the cutter shaft mounting until the bearing is entirely in the mounting hole, exposing the circlip slot. Using a circlip pliers, install the circlip back in place, watching to make sure the circlip falls into the slot. Remove the previously placed wood block, then use a wood strip to jam the cutter head, and use a wrench or hand pliers to install the radius gears. Hold up the transmission with one hand, and pivot the gearshift paddles with the other hand. Pay attention to the clips behind the gearshift paddles, it need to be stuck on the top of the transmission's extension rod, and there should be no wobbling of the transmission. Repeat backward the previous disassembly steps and install the transmission set screw back. There is a spacer under the right hand side of the circlip, then the circlip locks and there is no spacer on the left side. Use the circlip pliers to put the circlip on the chain locking position, be careful not to stretch the circlip too much or it won't work properly. Install the chain tensioner, don't stretch the spring too much. Use the wrench that comes with the device to install the cover back on. Using a circlip plier to install the circlip to the slot. When installing the pulley, remember to install the bottom spacer, I often forget this step, and then I have to do it all over again. Use the wood strip to jam the cutter head, then lock the nut on the outside of the pulley with a socket wrench. Put the belt over the edge of the pulley and turn it inward little by little. Use the hexagonal screw and spacer to lock this chain on this side, choose an applicable hexagonal wrench to tighten it but not too much, to avoid slipping, I messed up one side of the screw but fortunately does not matter too much. Install the chain tensioner, be careful not to overstretch the spring. Use the wrench to install the cover and lift handle. The knife shaft limit catch can be installed or not, it doesn't make much difference. When installing the inserts, remember to check whether the base is clean, place the inserts smoothly on the base, and use the included wrench and screws to put the inserts in place, the screws may drive the inserts to rotate direction, so we can use another hand to hold the inserts a little, and finally tighten the screws.
If there is a torque wrench it would be better, 6 nanometers is suggested. Installing the dust collection cover back on. Locking the three fixing screws. Put cover and screws back in place. Finally, make a test cut to see if the inserts are installed properly.